Okay, I can pinpoint three problems with this James Bond film. I watched quite a few James Bond films over the years. Almost all of them. But this one had three problems right off the bat. It's a really good way to end Daniel Craig's tenure by giving him the worst performance of his James Bond career. Let's talk about the three major problems. The top three problems of No Time to Die. Wait a minute, Ernst Stavro Blofeld was not the villain? Oh, hello, Rami Malik. I thought you just had a cameo. I'm not kidding you! Rami Malik is the villain? I mean, he's barely in the film! Why was Inspector and Ernst Stavro Blofeld the villain? They had the most impact on the film. They were the most terrifying aspect of the film. But no, they were killed halfway through. Rami Malik. Looked like he only really had a cameo in his film. He's barely in it. He has absolutely no impact on it. Every time he's on film, he just could have been a generic bad guy. Rami Malek is a very talented actor. You can do a lot of things with him. But this? The only time he seemed threatening was probably at the beginning of the film. Which, by the way, is probably the best Halloween Michael Myers film says Halloween 2. Playing the mask stalker. That's it. If he continued being a mask stalker, okay, there, that's at least some bit of quirk. Most James Bond films, villains have a quirk. Right, what's Rami Malik's the villain? Oh, his face is partially deformed. Yeah, you and like a ton of other villains over James Bond's career. Nobody cares. They often say, what makes a good James Bond film is a good James Bond villain. And sadly, this film did not have a good James Bond villain. Did anyone notice that Q performed massive war crimes? That what he did in this film was much worse than anything Spectre had ever done? In fact, much, much worse than anything that any of the villainous organizations throughout the entire history of James Bond have actually done. Yeah, Mallory, played by Ralph Fiennes, is probably the biggest villain in the history of James Bond. He participated in successful chemical warfare, and he tried justifying it. Oh, it's just for uh, queen and country. Really? Chemical warfare? I'm not going to be a uh, altruist here. I understand. Spy organizations, they do a lot of dirty, underhand things. But this is a case where they literally had chemical agents to kill people using DNA technology. So what happens to Mallory at the end? Oh, I'm sorry. Nothing happens to him. No, he sends his agents out and they all get killed. Not one bit of responsibility held by M. M was a lot more villainous than anything that Rami Malek or Christopher Waltz Ernst Donald Blofeld was in the entire series. James Bond return, huh? Oh, what happened to him? Oh, maniac! You blew it up! That's right! You blew him up! He's not coming back! At least not this version of James Bond or any other version. It's gonna have to be a complete reboot. Why? You gave him a terminal illness and it blew him up. There's no way James Bond can come back. He's dead. The only way you can do it is a reboot. I'm surprised you didn't just do the nuke the Batman like they did in Dark Knight Rises. At least there, we do know that Christian Bale survived a nuclear blast. But here, no, he's dead. I also love the fact that how virtually his death had almost no impact on the characters around him. Oh yeah, we're just gonna give him a nice dose. Goodbye. It like literally it wasn't even, there was no epilogue or anything about it. The sad part is they're gonna have to reboot the series. Reboots have suddenly started to anger audiences. And why? Because it's been done too often. I hope 
Miss Broccoli understands that every time you reboot the series, people start having less interest into it. You're going to have to really up the ante and really start shelling out getting big time actors for these films. And there you go. Three major problems with this film. Hell, it's this movie also had some annoying characters that I didn't even go over. What's the point? This film is a D. It's not a great film. Don't watch it. I just sat through three hours of this film, and I could have been three hours, I could have done plenty of things. Like, for instance, I could have reviewed Space Jam, which is garbage. Which, by the way, I want those two hours back as well. Anyway, bye!